Here we go, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. To the most underrated artist in the world right now. His name is... <laughs> But it is representing the hero trip. What up, why? <laughs> oh my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, Domain and all of his pimp ass glory is on <laughs> right now. How you doing? Man, I'm having a good weekend. I've been excited about tonight since we talked about this. How's it Kansas? I'm, I don't even know where to start. Like I, I'm. Let me tell. Let me tell everybody. What up, proper? Let me tell everybody kind of how I, I, this all happened. Me finding out who Domain was. So I'm just this lowly country rapper. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to do my thing in Northwest Kansas, and I have an Instagram page, obviously, and somebody. Follow anytime somebody follows me on Instagram, I always go to their 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 Instagram page and kind of check out who they are, what they are, find out if they're an artist, and if they're an artist, then I always go check them out. So this name comes up, domain. I didn't know how to say it. I was like, I don't, I even made a video and said your name wrong. I don't even know if you ever saw that, but no, but usually everybody does. Yeah, I I I, I said something like, well, all right, first. So I go check you. I go check the, you out, and you know what I heard first because I I've been preaching that song since what forever me. Yes, forever me. Little you know, baby. Yeah, that. So I pull up forever me. Yeah. It's the first because it, it, there was a lot. You've put out a lot of stuff since then. So I pull that up. And I'm, we're going to play the first song that I heard from you. And I'm going to try to reenact. Was this on YouTube? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because My homie I, Jeff. Bro. Do I? My homie Jeff, he was like, we need to get all your shit on YouTube. Um, so people can at least hear it. So that's, you know, shout out Jeff. Absolutely. Always, I I'm, here. I'm, hoping to, I'm hoping to talk to him, talk about him maybe later in kind of what uh why can I not find this what you look it, it keeps bringing up uh it keeps bringing up your it keeps wanting to play Geronimo hold on hey you nothing wrong with that hey that's a dope ass song too we, but hey, we shoot a video for that in Texas me and the bandits I'm waiting on Wow. Yeah. I just saw the bandits are coming to Wichita on May 7th. Nice. And I'm gonna go thinking, see thinking about going to see it. Nice. Because yeah. Wichita is only three hours from me. Yeah, they should love from there. I got them always. Yeah, the, the, that was uh, Geronimo's a, a dope ass song. And you, you crushed it on that song, dude. Thank you. It turned out. Yeah. It turned out. He reached out or Tex reached out. And uh, I was like, hell yeah, send me whatever. I got you. There you go. There was a couple of them I sent, and both of them were nice. Yeah. But that's the one they picked. I still got the other one. There yeah. you go. Yeah. All right. So this is, I pulled up his Instagram page, find my way to YouTube. And this is what I hear. And I'm like, okay. He's creating an experience. What, with Geronimo? No, I'm I've am got Forever Me playing. Yeah, Forever Me out the record. Yeah, that's, I just really started making music, and that's just what the vibe was to me. That was my vibe. I didn't even know it was my vibe at the time. Uh... So right here, my mind exploded. 
I was like, who is this dude? <laughs> Okay, so I was just trying to find a studio where I could establish the vibe, right? right. Where I could where I could get a, a working relationship with with somebody who could capture what I was trying to put down. Right. It was a bunch of trial and error in that time. Uh, it it took me a while to find somebody that wasn't out of their fucking. I gotta watch my language. It took me a while to find somebody that wasn't out of their mind that could land what I was trying to put down. And it took me kind of uh, uh, establishing a process with them and, and, and figuring out what all that was about. I had zero experience. Nobody in my family um, was ever into music. So music wasn't even a realistic thing. Uh, I got kicked out of band when I was in like sixth grade. <laughs> what well, no background? How did, uh, how did you but, how did you get kicked out of band in sixth grade? I don't even know, bro. The obviously the who the the guy who was in charge of band didn't know what uh, he didn't know what he's doing, bro. I don't know, you know, like he uh, I was making jokes or something, and he was having a bad day, and that combination led to me getting kicked out of band. Regardless, I never learned how to play a note or what a key was or wow or anything like that. Um, so. But what I did know is, like, I just loved music. And at that time, it was just, essentially, I loved rap music. Right. Um, and I don't even know what made me think I could do it. Well, I was up in New York. And long story short, I ended up coming back to Texas because a homeboy mom was like, bro, you got to go make some records. This is crazy what you're doing. We were watching some videos. Go ahead. And, and I didn't realize it, but Texas has a scene like no other. I mean, but it's so, I mean, and it's got history. When you start talking about DJ Screw and, yeah. like, you don't think of Texas as being, like, a rap hub, but it has its places that it's make way, that's made way. Yeah, it never really got the, it, it got a little attention for a little bit. Yeah. Um, but it, it didn't even scratch the surface when it did. Right. And then a whole generation of us coming up behind that. Yeah. Right, that's the real thing. Uh, but at that time, you know, CD, it was CDs. We was watching 106 in Park, right? With AJ and Free. Yeah. And... Uh, and like we were discovering Pac at the same time that like Lil Wayne was coming up. So it was just like, it was a whole different world. At any rate, uh, so when I got out of school, I went up to New York and a, a buddy of mine to this day, uh, one of my best friends, he's he's a stand up dude. He, we were watching, uh, I don't know, uh, TV up in his spot and, and, and a juvenile video came on. I think it was when he dropped, huh? So it was when 400 Degrees was out. And he said, uh, man, that's so bad. That's how they do that. Just like how somebody can rap like that. And I was like, that shit ain't that hard. Because I, I was fascinated with it, right? So I had been doing it at, at parties and shit like this. And so I did it. And he was like, bro, you got to go back to Texas. No, when you say you did it, when you say you did it at parties, you're talking about rapping? Yeah. Like free, yeah, yeah, exactly. Freestyling, rapping, all that. Sh yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I just love the music. I was, I, I loved, I absolutely loved the music. I mean, I would fall asleep listening to it, bro. 
right. to like to like southern rap I, every night i'd be knowing these albums inside and out now what i didn't realize at the time is that rap was the latest iteration of what i was interested in right because growing up i was interested in music the same way but i didn't recognize it and right. i didn't recognize it until i would say recently like past five years recognizing it was a thread that really ran through my whole life where I was fascinated by music, no matter what type of music it was. And it was always some crazy shit for the, for my age. Right. Soul music, like soul records. My pops was listening to like uh, everything from like Elvis to like Creedence Clearwater Revival to like Van Morrison. Um, and then at, uh, on my mom's side, like we, uh, we were always listening to country and shit. Um, you know, Garth Brooks was real big when I was young. So I've got all this, and I've been fascinated by the music my whole life. I was, at that time, at that time I was putting a cassette in, and I was, like, rewinding it, fast-forwarding it, uh, you know, trying to, like, come up with, with the lyrics to Rodeo. Right. Yeah. And, and and I never thought that, still at that time, I never thought that, like, at that time I was trying to go pro in basketball, bro. I was trying to go to the NBA. It had nothing to do with, with music. Um, and wow. then I, Point where I was like, whoa, it dawned on me that like music was a thread and and I came about it so natural. Uh nobody ever turned me on to it and nobody in my family did it. So it wasn't the obvious choice. It was always the hardest path. But I loved it most. My little girl told me language. <laughs> I love that baby girl. Anyway, so uh